Hi everybody, welcome to the second episode of Geek Point uh, I'm Chris. And I'm Shawn Michael. And we're coming to you on a second episode for this week because something big has happened uh, in the world of tech. Oh. Um, really big. And it's honestly, especially if you check Facebook, it's it's kind of dividing... You know, I don't want to say dividing the country, but at least in the part of the country we live in, in the Midwest, it's dividing the country. Because there's those of us that are on one, obviously on one side of the fence and then on the other. Um, so, you know, Sean, what, you know, why don't you give us a quick little rundown of what net neutrality is and then we can kind of get into what our thoughts are on it. Um, okay. For everybody. So the big issue in debate here uh, is the FCC just finally agreed on and passed resolutions for uh, the passing of net neutrality, widespread uh, uh, net neutrality. Um, and essentially, the way it works now, and it has worked over the last, I don't know, uh, let's see, 1989 till now, um, net neutrality is... Uh, we have open access to all the content on the internet. You can go to mm -hmm. any website you choose, um, regardless of what it is, whether it's kids shows, whether it's Netflix, whether it's religious themed, whether it's extremist, you can go anywhere on the internet free of any encumbrances. Um, mm -hmm. The telecoms want to change that. And when I say the telecoms, so we can redefine and clarify here, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, Cox, uh, and Mediacom are the primary major providers Time within Warner the country. Also. Time Warner, excuse me. Um, so that's your, that's your big six. And those companies want to restrict your access to the internet by charging not only the content providers, such as Netflix and Google, Facebook, um, for the content that they provide to the internet for you to access, but they want to mm -hmm. charge you a fee, a premium, an extremely high premium for internet fast lanes, which yep. is to say that in order to access the content on those sites, you'll pay a premium and you'll get to have it at the same speed you do now. But if you don't pay the premium, then those sites may be throttled and have slower speeds to access the information, data, and content therein. Um, and new obviously, that's not what that's not the way Comcast, AT and T, Verizon, etc. are selling is it. advertising it. No, they're exactly. not. Exactly. And we understand this. Consumers understand this uh, for the most part. The ones who are informed, um, and so does the federal government. And up until the last uh, the last six months, uh, for those for full disclosure, we are fully in support of net neutrality. Um, and for full disclosure, the chairman and uh, overlord of the FCC is Tom Wheeler. And uh, I want to make sure everyone understands that Tom Wheeler has spent the majority of his life as not only a legislator, but also as the uh, legislator representing as a lobbyist for the telecoms. The puppet um, of yes. the... Uh, yeah. So here is a man who spent a large portion of his career being paid large amounts of money by the telecoms Very. to represent their interests in Congress. Now, here's where things get interesting. When he became chair of the FCC, I, as well as many other people, just about pulled our hairs out uh, and wanted to jump off a cliff because I was really terrified. And he started justifying those fears that he was going to represent the interests of the telecoms and sink the ship and make sure that consumers got the shaft and they made millions. And all the way up until this last year, he continued to do so by by pushing legislation that was anti-consumer and pro-telecom. Yep. But all of a sudden, blowing everyone's mind, he did a complete 180. He tucked tail and, well, I won't say tucked tail because he actually stood up against a couple of the scariest agencies in this country. Because um, I fear the telecoms more than I fear the CIA. <laughs> um, the... The telecoms. The CIA doesn't have any information unless the telecoms provide it to them. There we go. That's where they get their information from. <laughs> yep. So the telecoms, uh, he stood up to them and said, here's the deal. We need wide reaching, far reaching guidelines uh, that dictate how, the, how consumers and their rights to the internet are protected. Um, 
the path with which they chose to do this was to involve government regulation. And this is honestly where the catch comes in. Essentially, in order to protect the internet and keep it from the hands of the telecoms, um, we had to deprivatize it. If it was left in the hands of the telecoms as companies who control access to stuff that they consider on their private network um, that they sell to their consumers, we had to classify the internet as a utility. Mm -hmm. So under federal guideline, it falls now under Title II exclusivity, meaning that it's recognized as a public utility. And because of that, it now has some government regulation. Um, And this is where, as you've mentioned, Chris, this aforementioned fear mongering has started to to fall in. Um, There's been a whole mess of it on my Facebook feed. I'm just in it. And it it breaks my heart because you've, you've got some... We'll loosely call them journalists uh, out there. Yeah, um, just saying. You know, this is Big Brother coming to coming to take control of your internet. Oh, Barack Hussein Obama wants to stop you from being able to be a Christian on the internet, and you know they're going to regulate exactly what you can see and you know what you're going to be able to do and. Interestingly enough, and, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, I can part of me can see that see that point, okay? Yes, because it is government oversight, and there's not not every program out there that the government runs. I'm looking at you, a, a Affordable Health Care Act um, is the most well run program on the planet. Um, you know, obviously they're all well intentioned. They don't purposely make programs to screw over the american public no but it does happen from time to time and so i can see why there are individuals out there that are nervous to put it mildly about about net neutrality the issue at hand is is twofold we've got the the free-flowing internet which Mm -hmm. in my case i prefer to call the internet an entity to me, it's almost um, sentient. Uh, the internet is a yeah. it's a stream of consciousness. It's where everyone pours their thoughts, their feelings. We do our learning. We do our engaging. We do our connecting. We do our entertaining all through the internet. The internet has become much larger than anyone ever possibly conceived it can be. Oh, and absolutely. Then, then we've got this group of people who... Um, they don't want anyone telling them how they can use their internet. So they're, they're first ones to jump up and say, okay, I don't want these telecoms controlling how I access my information or dictating the rates at which I can access it and things like that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they're the same ones to jump up and say, we don't want government in our internet either. And I think it's a very important uh, thing yeah. to, to distinguish here. Right now, Okay, and I'm with you. I understand the Mm -hmm. precedent this sets and the potential risks, okay? Yeah. But right now, the federal government's not looking to get into the internet business. What they're doing is they're setting some guidelines to say, okay, here's the deal, guys. We're the referees on the field. These are the rules. Everyone has to play by, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're Comcast and, you know, mega mega maniacal company A or whether you're (laughs) – Tom Joe's local internet service provider putting up antennas mm-hmm. on people's houses in the local rural community to get signal. Everyone has to play by these same rules. And as that's long what's as good you about abide it. by as long as you abide by them, we'll have no problems. And um, that's what's good about it. it exactly. It, what, what what the net what net neutrality hopefully is gonna do is, you know, Netflix is up here, you know, as kind of like the king of media streams. But let's say, let's say we, let's say Geek.0 decides we want to start streaming movies to people. Right. Well, we don't have billions of dollars to pay Comcast or Verizon to have the same download speeds that Netflix would have. So we'd be automatically at a disadvantage to be able to sell our services to the general public. Without net neutrality. Without without net neutrality. neutrality. Correct. Exactly. So net neutrality is hoping to provide the capability of Geek.0 to be on the same level as Netflix, even though we're about this much the size of Netflix. Well, 
about that much the size of Netflix. It, it gives the little guy a chance to be able to spur innovation, spur creativity, and have an opportunity to compete on the stage with the big guys. Correct. Equal opportunity content mm-hmm. provision. Um, and I, this may turn into a bit of a tangent, but I, 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 man, I've been fired up about talking about this all day. Oh, yeah. You've been texting me. When are we going to record? When are we going to record? Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, we cannot in any way, shape or form allow any company to infringe on our ability to access the Internet. And yep. this issue, I know, you know, here we are, we're a, we're a geek and tech uh, themed um, video cast. Uh, we talk about these issues. And so it would seem that this is natural territory. But I don't think at this point the average consumer as a whole not involved in the tech industry understands the sheer importance of this one yeah. piece of legislation. Yeah, um, think about it this way. Uh, 10 years ago, you know, 90% of media that was consumed in this country was consumed by consumers in a movie theater or through their cable network. Okay. Yep. The shift has gone completely in the other direction. The majority of people are consuming their content through internet-based services now, through Netflix, through Hulu, through Vudu, um, through Vimeo, through YouTube. I hope nobody's consuming it through Vudu. I feel bad. I <laughs> I, though I do as well. They're, I mean, they've got enough subscribers <laughs> that they stay in yeah. business. Well, they got that freaking s- stick at Walmart, but still. <laughs> so um, the, the culture has shifted. And, mm-hmm. you know, everyone knows about the, I, I call it the $120 paradigm. The cable companies get together and they've made a decision years ago that $120 a month is what they feel every house in America should be paying them for their services as a whole, which is where you mm-hmm. get your bundle packages where you want one channel, but you got to get 30 others to get the one channel. Um, yes, all of the, yeah, Exactly. The bundle package is <laughs> yeah. no a la carte. So what happens is the cable company say, <clears throat> we're looking for $120 minimum for each household to do what we want to do so that our executives can keep driving, you know, multi-million dollar cars, living in gigantic houses and I'm consumers yeah. and consumers who can barely afford to pay their bills are literally up to the gills trying to keep up with being able to entertain themselves when they're not at work. So yeah. what happened when this culture shift happened is everybody started using the internet to consume their media. Okay. And cable subscriptions drastically dropped. And so you started seeing the telecoms at that point skyrocketing the prices of internet. And that's what the to whole make up for what point they're losing. Exactly. To make up what they're losing in cable subscriptions, they jack up the price of your internet. And mm-hmm. the sad part about it is the argument, and Chris, you hit this on the head, the sad part of the argument is the cable companies are literally trying to go to Congress and convince the American public that the problem here is that there's such limited bandwidth in this country, okay, that they need to be able to charge more because so many people are flooding the, the tubes, so to speak, the highway, watching Netflix content, and now 4K is coming out. And so mm-hmm. there's this massive bandwidth constriction. Uh, the problem is it's it's all bullshit. BS. Pardon my French. Exactly. Uh, uh, this you know what? Co- that's that's fine. You can French all you want because these companies. That's exactly what it is. These companies laid this backbone, okay, for the bandwidth a decade ago or more, mm-hmm. and many of them have been making massive infrastructure uh, changes uh, over that period of time, laying fiber optic um, throughout many areas. Now, here's the deal. Uh, I read an an analogy that one of these pro-telecom reporters used where he said, imagine that a furniture retailer was now in a position to offload the entire cost of shipping their their merchandise to the trucking company. But the trucking company is being told they cannot charge any more for truck A versus truck B, no matter how much furniture it's taking up or how much space it's taking up. Uh, that operates under the assumption that crappy analogy operates under the assumption that the that there's internet, a limited amount of that, space. That there's a limited amount of space in the truck, and the fact of the matter is, we're operating with a Grand Canyon pipeline where they run small little four man boats through the bottom of the Colorado River. And folks, do and your research. If not, you look, oh, go ahead. If you look at the developed world, if you look at the developed world, I'm talking, you know, your, you know, Europe, Canada, yeah. Japan, uh, South Korea, Southeast Asia, uh, upper, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, upper level country, you know, not, you know, mid level to rich countries. 
even though we're one of the richest countries in the world, we have some of the slowest internet. Correct. And that's nonsense. And they try to claim that it's for infrastructure reasons. Absolutely and that's, not. Here's, that's not why. Here's the problem. And this is why I people get mad. I, I hear people freaking out about Google all the time. Oh, my God. They have all this. Google has done more to advance society. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to I'm not going to put angel wings on Google here. I understand oh, yeah, that Skynet. <laughs> I, I understand that every innovation and every directive that Google pushes helps put money in their pockets. I don't mm -hmm. care. I don't care because the same things that are putting money in their pockets are advancing the access that consumers have, okay, yep. to, to their advertisers, but they're also improving the world we live in. Google has been working for over a decade to prove to consumers and to the telecoms that you can provide consumers for virtually the same price they're, they're paying now with more than 300 times the bandwidth that they have mm -hmm. currently, okay? I have a 30 meg connection. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. a 30 meg connection that I pay $110 a month for. There are customers in that much for it. Wow. There, and there's customers in Kansas City paying $90 a month for 1000 meg. 30 versus 1000. The bandwidth is there. It's just mm -hmm. this. As you mentioned, us as Geek.0, we can't compete with Netflix. Here's the deal. The telecoms are being challenged by companies like Google, okay, yep. who are saying, look, you can do this. You just have to innovate. And the cable companies are like, no, we don't operate on innovation. We, own, we operate under the controlled thought of limited <laughs> access and high prices for that access. They don't want to open up those pipelines because they're not going to make the maximum amount per gigabyte off of mm -hmm. those clients. So as soon as they move into these high-end pipelines of fiber optic and open those floodgates, they have to actually give the consumer more for their money and they have yep. to tone back what they're paying their executives, their shareholders. They don't want to do that. They don't want to innovate. So they're fighting this argument in Congress stating, oh, well, it's going to hurt us. Guess what, yep. buddy? That is the price of progress. We live in a country where companies are innovating for the consumer's benefit to improve the quality of life and the quality of internet access. And you simply don't want to get on the bandwagon and your decision to fight that problem is to throw money through lobbyists to stifle other companies' ability to provide those services so that you can be the only game in town. And that, my friend, is a monopoly and it's the core problem with this setup as we have it. And that's why Netropolity is so important. And a perfect example of that is, is you know, like you said, with Google Fiber, um, in certain areas of the country, you know, your Kansas City's, Dallas, and San Francisco's, yep. there's there's multiple markets where Google's been able to move in on, with fiber internet. But Dallas is a perfect example of this. AT and T had a stranglehold yes. on Dallas, and as a utility provider, AT and T is able to use the telephone poles and things along those lines to be able to string their lines across where because they own the rights to those poles because they're a telecom Correct. where Google was not classified as a telecom. So AT&T charged Google a massive premium to be able to use those same poles where now that it's net neutrality, it, well, at least temporarily, um, until you know we see how it goes. There's already lawsuits filed. Google has the same right, being a tier two utility as an internet service provider. Correct. Google has the same right to those telephone poles that AT and T has. And and I tell and it's such so a that really gives good them point. the ability to create their infrastructure to be able to give everybody the faster internet that we want. And I'll be honest with you, compared to the other uh, other countries on the face of this earth deserve and we're entitled to we're entitled to it because we we have the capability to provide it we just have like you said um companies that are being more and, and i understand it they're being more responsive to their shareholders than they are to their customers correct and com countries like south korea uh hong kong specifically is a perfect mm -hmm. example uh south korea is a perfect example um uh southeast asia the average consumer in Asia has five times faster broadband on their wireless phone, on their mobile yep. network, than American users have for their home broadband internet. That's that's disgusting. 
especially yeah. when these are countries that are challenged politically in a lot of senses for their own personal freedoms. But here we are well, living in the free nation, and we can't even yeah. get decent high-speed internet to our consumers in in you know uh, major areas. Well, in the number of areas, because you, know, you know I drive around for for a living. Um, yep. it's one of the primary functions of my job is driving my truck around. There's so many spots in this area of the country where we live where I can't even get a 4G signal. Yeah. Well, sorry, where I can't even get a 3G signal. That's sad. Let alone a 4G LTE signal. And the nice part about this is that it this not this doesn't just affect your home internet. This, you know, as a service provider, this will this is this will also affect your mobile data plans. Yes. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see because my question is, cause I say, you know, you, you can't charge more for different download speeds. So let me ask you this is my cable internet provider now going to provide me with their top tier of service for what I'm paying for their entry level tier of service. It's going to be interesting. Nope. This, and I'm sure they won't. Here's, but, here's you the know. problem. You mentioned uh, the AT&T situation in Dallas, and this is a really good example. Um, so the argument the FCC is receiving from the telecoms is that uh, Google and companies like that who are laying fiber and expanding these networks and giving consumers in the same areas that they provide service – with much better quality service for the same price. Absolutely. That Google's stifling their ability to make money. That Google is literally um, killing um, the competitive market. This is what's crazy, though. There are a number of communities in this country, thousands and thousands of communities in this country, that Google has been desperately trying to get into for years. And mm -hmm. the legislative powers of the telecoms had been forcing them out legally by suppressing their ability to expand into those markets because it would uh, it would force them to compete with them. And because the services the telecoms are providing in those areas are so low end, they state that Google's offering would literally overwhelm theirs, that no one would decide to go with their business if those, those services were provided from Google. So they have literally, through legislation, blocked Google from innovating and providing customers with options. Which so, is funny. And yet you're they, the ones going the with exact, the argument. They did the exact same thing to dial-up service not 10 years ago. Exactly right. So they're big shock here. They're freaking for those For those who remember Net Zero and Juno <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, those providers yeah. that no longer exist anymore Prodigy. because they yeah. were overtaken and bought out by these larger companies. So mm -hmm. the the issue at hand, and I urge everybody, please do not take our word for it. Don't don't listen to anything I say about net neutrality and go, oh, okay, yeah, no, no, don't. I mean, listen to it, take it as a grain of salt, but please go do your homework, read up mm -hmm. on your local legislations, read up on your city and state guidelines. You'll find out that nationwide across this country. The most successful and the most well-received networks in this entire nation are city utility broadband services. This is mm -hmm. cities in this country that offer internet as a utility in their in their city through the city, just like your city water or anything else. Fiber optic internet for everybody for a flat fee per month. Those customers yep. are the uh, are the most satisfied in in you know consumer surveys the most happy with their internet service of any other provider in the nation they get a consistent bill okay for a high quality very fast service okay that comes directly with the rest of their bills from the city every month they there's no fussing there's no rate increases there's no hikes there's no bill padding there's none of the crap that comes with tele Coms that they've been sued and penalized and fined for over the years, um, and all of the benefits of innovation. So what's been happening in the last five years is telecoms have now been literally lobbying through the federal government to block cities from being able to deploy municipal uh, fiber networks as utilities in their in their cities, stating once again it stifles innovation and blocks out these telecoms from putting their services in. So the same things that they're doing to other companies, okay, to prevent them from expanding their services like Google, okay, they're also doing to communities that are trying to do it on their own to say, fine, yep. we're not going to rely on your services and your high rates. We'll do it ourselves. And they're saying, mm, no, that's not because fair they're, to us. They're, you can't call them monopolies. But they are, they are. There are regional monopolies 
across this country. I, I, you know, I, Kansas City's Time Warner, you, Dallas AT and T. You can't New call York them monopolies. Comcast. You can't call them monopolies. Who? I guess not because they haven't been broken up by the FTC or the FCC. Really? Who's your so internet apparently provider? Apparently, they're Chris? not monopolies. Who's hmm? your internet provider? Oh, I don't want them to shut off my internet. So oh, I'm just <laughs> a, I'm just asking. Uh, so oh, it's, so uh, it's company A. One. Okay, cable one. Who else? Who else do you have an opportunity to connect at a relative uh, same speed in your town? Nobody. Oh, oh, that's Buddy. not a monopoly. Yep, so it's a monopoly. So yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. This is ridiculous. These companies there are operate monopolies all over the country. Absolutely, they operate with complete authority and no restrictions and no competition. And they have the nerve to go, you know, uh, basically say to Congress, "Hey, look, we need your help protecting us against these other incumbents because they're threatening our business." I yep. got an idea. Innovate. Provide, yeah. uh, provide, you know, co uh, co comparable services to these companies, and you won't have to worry about that. Well, you say that, you know, that, and that is one nice thing I will say. You know, you were saying you have thirty meg service for a hundred and ten dollars a month. Where I'm at with a different cable company, I have fifty meg service for fifty nine ninety nine a month. It's just retarded, which I'm sure makes you want to just reach through that monitor and punch me in the face. Pretty much, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, but mine started out it. technically. My service was sixty dollars a month for the first year, but it's a cable oh, company. It's the promotional year. package, and once yeah. it, you know, once the promotional package is over, it went up to one hundred and ten dollars. Uh, Very you of your internet. <laughs> fourteen years ago, okay, my oldest son is fourteen years old. Okay, fourteen years ago, I lived in Lakewood, California. At the time, I was on AT and T Roadrunner internet. Okay. I had broadband speeds of 50 meg, which at the time was unheard of, okay? 50 meg. That's the lowest service I can get now. For $69 a month. That was 14 years ago. You're telling me that we yeah. haven't innovated enough, we haven't progressed enough technologically as a country in the last 14 years to provide better quality internet than that at a lower price? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the disappointing part about it. I read that, an article that, the other that's day. The great that, part about this is that hopefully this will will spur innovation. Yeah, we hope, and I can only. I'm I'm so excited about this. You brought up. Uh, I've got to bring up the uh, Hussein Obama. I read one of the same articles that uh, labeled him as that. Uh, I think it's funny that the only supporters of net neutrality were the technology industry and a few consumer groups up until last year. Even mm -hmm. Obama had done several things to side with the cable companies. When his approval mm -hmm. rating dropped to the lowest in any president in history, suddenly Obama was all about net neutrality. Yep. All of a sudden, he was like, oh, yeah, net neutrality this. And I've noticed over the past uh, couple of days, since the notification of this potential passing, almost every single article that references net neutrality has mentioned how for this that Obama is, which makes me chuckle. Yeah. I'm not playing the politics of this here. I just yeah. find it funny that his name is now attached to everything surrounding net neutrality yeah. when he was staunchly against it 14 months ago. Yeah, it's 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 just the 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 land of the the politico. You know, it's right. It is what it is, man. Um, you brought up an interesting question, and I think this is something I'd like to pose to our watchers, viewers, readers, listeners. Um, and that's subscribers. this. Subscribers, hopefully. Subscribe to our channel, guys. Um, now that net neutrality has been passed, now that this is a wide-reaching set of expectations, guidelines that the telecoms have to abide by, my question is this. Telecoms are losing a massive amount of money on their cable subscriptions. Cable subscriptions are down like 70% over the last five years, okay? Will we see a nationwide gradual or sudden increase in internet rates over the next 12 months, okay, to compensate for the losses and their loss at being able to charge customers for an internet fast lane? Will we see the price of your current internet service, okay, go up? so that the telecoms can recoup some of the money that they're not able to strangle you for now that net neutrality is in place. I'm just curious. There'll, there'll probably be a little bit of that, I would think, but it all you know, it's all honestly going to depend on the service provider. You know, Comcast, Time Warner, yeah, that's probably going to happen. Some of your smaller regional guys, it may not happen. Fingers crossed. 
Hopefully, please cable <laughs> one is my internet. I love you, cable one. Just make it faster for cheaper. Um, so you know, we'll see. But that is a great question to ask. Let us know in the comments right down there um, what you think. Um, we're just about at thirty minutes, which is actually a little longer than we probably intended on going. But yeah, as you can yeah. tell, um, so we're passionate. We're both very passionate. We're yeah, going to neutrality. Hashtag net neutrality. Um, FTW you know, is, is trending like crazy on uh, is trending like crazy on Facebook and Twitter. So um, even though it's not the number one topic that seems to be going on, today. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't go, don't, do don't it. bring it up. Okay. No. Uh, so we'll just leave the weird color changing dress thing alone. So whoever sent those pictures out, screw you. Hashtag, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, for that, uh, I'm Chris. And I'm Shawn Michael. Uh, have a geeky day.